So we have some breaking news coming out in the last couple of minutes or so, and that is that Lars Sullivan, SmackDown superstar, former NXT superstar, has been released by the WWE. Now, Lars Sullivan hasn't been on WWE television since November of 2020, and he is not going to be returning anytime soon because he is no longer under contract with the WWE. Now, this is according to a report by Mike Johnson at PW Insider. According to Johnson, uh, WWE quietly released Lars Sullivan last month. Now, a reason as to why Lars Sullivan has been released isn't yet known or hasn't been given in any reports. We might find out more in the last couple, in the next couple of days rather, uh, but it's hardly been a smooth ride when it comes to Lars Sullivan in WWE. Now, in terms of what he had been doing recently on WWE television, or at least uh, in November when, during his last appearance, uh, Sullivan was part of the SmackDown brand, but he had not been on the show since November where he did a sit-down interview with SmackDown commentator Michael Cole explaining the importance of bullying in his life. Now, in terms of wrestling matches, Lars last wrestled on the October 23 episode of SmackDown where he defeated Chad Gable. Now, in terms of his career with WWE, Lars Sullivan was signed by WWE in 2013. He made his NXT debut in 2017 and made his main roster debut on WWE Monday Night Raw following WrestleMania 35 where he attacked the recently retired Kurt Angle. But after he joined the main roster, things certainly took a turn for the worse for Lars Sullivan because in May of 2019, WWE fined Lars Sullivan $100,000 for controversial remarks he made in the past on a bodybuilding forum. He was also required to complete sensitivity training. Now, Sullivan addressed the remarks prior to the fine being announced, saying, quote, There is no excuse for the inappropriate remarks I made years ago. They do not reflect my personal beliefs nor who I am today, and I apologize to anyone I offended. Now, Sullivan then suffered a knee injury of June of 2019, only a couple of months later, and he was off television until October of 2020. He had just four televised matches on the main roster. So this one, to be honest... Whenever anyone gets released, whenever one, whenever the, the news comes out that anyone's been released, it's always a bit shocking because it feels like it kind of has come out of nowhere. With this Lars Sullivan one, you don't wish anyone to ever lose their job, especially during these current circumstances and current times where looking for work is more difficult than ever. I mean, we're in a recession and unemployment is through the roof right now. But frankly, when it comes to Lars Sullivan, it was always a matter of time. And frankly, I'm stunned he managed to last this long. Uh, I mentioned the, the controversies that he's had during his time with WWE, but it always felt like it was something else. Every every time he came back, every time he appeared back on WWE television, it was another controversy. It was another something out of his past. It was more controversy, more controversy, more controversy. So as I mentioned, the first thing that came to light was the controversial remarks he made on the uh, bodybuilding forum years ago that came to light. Now I say controversial, that's probably putting it, uh, putting it lightly, frankly. Those comments were disgusting, uh, abhorrent, they were racist, homophobic. I mean, everything you can imagine uh, that's bad and isn't acceptable to say, Lars Sullivan said it on those bodybuilding forums. It was horrendous. It was horrendous. And frankly, the fact that he was fined $100,000 and some people said that he might have been suspended while he was off of his knee injury as well and forced to undergo sensitivity training, he was very, very, very lucky uh, that he wasn't let go and released at that point in his WWE contract. He was very, very fortunate at that period of time. Luckily, he had some people higher up in WWE that were fighting for him. We'll touch on who in a second. He managed to stick around. But during that period of time, whilst he was out of the spotlight, when he was injured, suspended, whatever you want to call it, even more controversies came to light then. So obviously, he's fine for these uh, racist, homophobic and controversial remarks he made on this bodybuilding forum years ago. But whilst he's out and whilst he's on the shelf, it then comes to light that he had uh, appeared in some adult entertainment uh, earlier in his life as well. Now, in terms of that, look, that's, that, that is nothing illegal. That is nothing offensive, I suppose. I think the issue there was whether or not he disclosed that to WWE. I think the fact that if he did disclose that he had done that prior to signing with WWE, I don't know. If I think if WWE knew that, they might have had reservations of signing him. Again, I'm not 100% sure on that story. And to be, to be honest... I never felt tr truly comfortable with people mocking him about that. I don't think that's fair. Uh, as I mentioned at the time, he did nothing illegal at that period of time. Um, is it looked down upon? Is it frowned upon by certain people, I suppose? But I never felt that that was fair for him to be mocked for doing uh, same-sex adult entertainment. I don't think that's right. It certainly was an embarrassment for WWE because it 
came across that they were blindsided. It was something that was trending on social media at the time. Uh, and I'm sure WWE didn't like that one of their performers had been doing adult entertainment in the past. And once again, it raises the question if WWE did or didn't know that Lars Sullivan had been participating in this uh, prior to signing with WWE. It also raises the question once again, if Lars Sullivan had disclosed he'd made these controversial remarks on this bodybuilding forum before he signed with WWE. I've seen conflicting reports as to both of those things. I've seen uh, some reports say that he did let WWE know that these comments he made on the bodybuilding forum were out there. I've seen some that say he didn't or he signed with the company and then just prior to his main roster debut, he disclosed them to the WWE and his uh, debut was delayed. There were reports at one period of time, I remember in uh, January of 2019, that Lars Sullivan was going to debut by attacking John Cena and taking him out of the Royal Rumble match. There were even discussions that Lars Sullivan would face John Cena at WrestleMania 35 that year. Of course, none of that happened because Lars Sullivan didn't make his debut on TV. He His debut was delayed until after WrestleMania. There were reports at the time of things of panic attacks or some issues and, and nerves of performing. Some accredited that to these uh, comments resurfacing or some of the stuff he had done prior in his life as well resurfacing. I don't know. It certainly was... Um, an interesting situation to say the least. So that's all going on. You've got the controversy about the comments he made on the bodybuilding forum. You then have the contro controversy about uh, his past in adult entertainment. Uh, and then furthermore, just before he um, he comes back rather uh, in uh, around October time of 2020, he made his return to WWE during the, uh, the draft last year, the SmackDown episode of the WWE draft on Fox. And again, he made his return. And I think a lot of people... Uh, let out a collective groan because of the controversies that he'd been a part of whether it was the whether it was the the stuff that he said on the bodybuilding forum or if it was the stuff being involved in the adult entertainment people said I'm surprised this guy's under contract. Um, so people were surprised. Not only was he under contract still, but he returned and he was the dominating monster that he'd always been on WWE television. He returned, he attacked the likes of Jeff Hardy and uh, I think the, maybe The Miz, John Morrison. He even defeated Jeff Hardy clean on television. He was defeating everyone and he was this big bad monster again. A lot of people at the time said, I can't believe he's on TV. I can't believe he's under contract. What's going on? The reports then came out that basically... No one was a massive fan of him backstage in terms of the talent, in terms of the males and females backstage. They were uh, a bit perturbed by him, if that's the right word. Uh, but Vince McMahon, the, the most important man in WWE, the most important person in WWE, the C, uh, CEO, the, uh, <laughs> uh, the the main guy, the guy who the buck stops at Vince McMahon, he was a fan of Lars Sullivan. He liked Lars Sullivan. He thought there was money to be made there. So if Vince McMahon likes you, if Vince McMahon wants to push you, you're always going to be have uh, an element of good grace there. And regardless of the controversies, he had the good grace of Vince McMahon. So his WWE career continued continued. However, he was back on TV for one one week and there were more controversies uh, that came out about him because then it had come to light that possibly there were even more comments on other bodybuilding forums or the same bodybuilding forum. I can't remember which one it was, but there were other comments that were out there and were starting to resurface. And again, those comments were just as bad, if not worse, um, as the comments that had been that had surfaced previously. Again, racist, homophobic, you name it. They were uh, awful and controversial comments and remarks made several years ago but nevertheless they were made by Lars Sullivan furthermore it then came out that Lars Sullivan had been harassing a female on Instagram uh, during just a few weeks prior to him returning to WWE television it was this woman on Instagram who was a yoga instructor and Lars Sullivan was harassing her to asking her to send him compromising pictures of herself ask saying that he would pay for compromising pictures of her it was just really disgusting and abhorrent behavior and certainly not behavior of someone that has been fined a hundred thousand dollars in the past had been uh, gone to sensitivity training for previous comments and previous behaviors and actions it was certainly yet another controversy and even at that point people started to say how many how many lives has this guy got you know you've got the bodybuilding stuff you've got the stuff about the adult entertainment not that that's necessarily a, a wrong or a legal thing but again maybe the the thing that's bad about that is that if he didn't disclose it to WWE you then have more remarks surfacing you then have um, possible harassment of a female on social media as well certainly someone that was feeling uncomfortable it just felt like it was constant it was always constant and people as fans on social media were saying, look, you've got guys in the company 
that are company guys, they show up every single week, they don't get in any trouble, they have tremendous talents, and they don't get a fraction of the push that someone like Lars Sullivan is getting, and they're having all of these controversies all the time. I know pro wrestling, the industry, isn't historically fair, but it didn't seem just that Lars Sullivan was getting still all of this all of this uh, positive pushes in WWE uh, when he wasn't uh, behaving himself outside of the ring or hadn't been... Uh, uh, upholding himself like he should do, like every other WWE superstar does. That didn't seem right. That didn't seem right or fair at the time. And then if you want to look at it in terms of just a, a creative element, I think as well, I think his presentation as this big dominating monster, obviously he had a unique look. I think he was decent in the ring. If he, if, if he didn't have any of that outside stuff, could he be a successful big man monster? Absolutely. He could have been. He's got a very unique look. He's a very imposing and dominating and physical person. But when they were doing these vignettes on SmackDown as well, this is something else I must mention. When they were doing these vignettes about Lars Sullivan, about fighting back against bullies and people had bullied him when he was younger and he was going to fight back and there was this sort of rage but sadness inside of him and all that kind of stuff. It was just horrible, horrible television. It was really badly done. I mean, strip away every other controversy around it. If you want to just focus on the pure wrestling aspect of it, just the television presentation. Did he have the look? Yes. Could he go in the ring? to a decent level, uh, but the other stuff, the presentation that they were doing with these vignettes, the, the scripting, the delivery, all of it was horrible, absolutely horrible. It was just bad television. It was really bad television. And once again, when you're watching that and you're watching bad television at the time and you're just saying to yourself, why is this guy on TV? There is there is so much bad that he has done or there's so much bad about all the things that he has gone through when it comes to his WWE career that why is he continuously, continuously getting these opportunities? Again, I'm not one to preach about fairness because this is pro wrestling. Fairness doesn't exist. But it felt like eventually WWE would just have to cut ties because it gets to a point where it's no longer viable for them to keep him around. Financially, you can say, oh, we can still make money, we can still make money, but eventually the scales tip and eventually you go, look, it's just not worth the money anymore. It's not worth the money because the PR is so bad or potentially the PR is so bad. Now, as I mentioned, according to Mike Johnson at PW Insider, we don't know the reason that Lars Sullivan was released. Maybe he requested it, requested it himself. Maybe there's more controversies that are soon to come to light and WWE said, you know what, enough's enough. We just, you know, you've had your... 10 different lives or nine lives and you, you can't we can't we can't do this anymore we can't have you making all of these mistakes it looks bad on the company so we don't know that's speculation i don't know so we'll find out that i would guess soon again my initial reaction to it and that's what this is because this only broke a couple of minutes ago was i'm surprised it took this long i am surprised it took this long uh, and what i would assume is probably the case is that Vince McMahon was Lars Sullivan's biggest advocate backstage. Vince McMahon was the reason that Lars Sullivan stuck, stayed around so long. And I think eventually Vince McMahon obviously decided, you know what, enough's enough for whatever reason. And Lars Sullivan is no longer with the WWE because of it. So that's the situation when it comes to Lars Sullivan. He was quietly released last month. We don't know why. I'm sure we'll find out more in the coming days. But Lars Sullivan is no longer with WWE. But of course, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on Lars Sullivan being released by WWE quietly last month? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys. Talking about WWE, AEW, Impact Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. It really does help us out here on YouTube. Go up the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestle News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch thank you very much for watching listening streaming or have you come across this video today and i'll speak for you again very very soon hey guys thank you for watching listening streaming or have you come across this video today be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video or click the bottom there to subscribe or the bottom right hand corner thank you very much and i'll speak to you again very soon